Uh, my name is Jacob Sherman. Today is October 22nd, 2010. I'm here at the OSU Alumni Center interviewing Miss Ann Enix. And uh, Miss Enix is here for her 50th uh, year class reunion, class of 1960. I uh, just want to welcome you back and congratulations on your 50th year celebration. Uh, let us begin, like, uh, let us discuss uh, where you grew up and your family, uh, family situation growing up, like how many brothers and sisters that you had, and let's begin there. Well, I was born and raised in Gould, Oklahoma, which is in Harmon County in southwest Oklahoma. Uh, uh, I have three brothers, one who is older than I am, and then twin brothers that are younger than I am. Uh, my father was a farmer, and my mother was a homemaker until I was ready to come to Oklahoma State and went back to teaching. Uh, she was a high school math teacher. Okay. What kind of uh, farm did you grow up on? Uh, we had wheat and cotton. Uh, this was back in the era when uh, the schools in that part of the state would let out in the fall for what we call cotton picking vacation. <laughs> and we would uh, be out of school for like six weeks to pick cotton. Did you, did you yourself uh, pick cotton? And yes, I did. That's how I made my money to pay my little extra expenses during the school year until the next spring. Mm -hmm. And how many uh, hours a day would you be out in the field? Uh, from the time we had had breakfast in the morning, if the cotton was dry enough to pick, until uh, late in the evening. Uh, it it uh, was an all-day job. Mm -hmm. did, you, uh, did you raise any animals on your farm? Uh, we had some animals. Dad had uh, a few cows that he milked by hand. Uh, so he was up very early every morning. Uh, we had a few uh, pigs. My brothers did raise uh, uh, show pigs and 4-H and FFA mm -hmm. and chickens, uh, but not a real large uh, operation in that area. Did, did you participate in 4-H? Uh, Yes, I was very active in 4-H. Like, uh, what activities did uh, you do? Well, I could not, <laughs> I could not settle myself on any one activity. So, all of the ones involving homemaking, clothing, canning, cooking, food preparation, uh, home improvement, uh, and so when it was record book time, uh, instead of filling one out in clothing or that, I filled mine out in. It was called Girls Record, and my last year it was called Girls Home Economics. And I did go to national and was one of the six national winners in uh, Girls Home Economics that year. Congratulations. Thank you. And uh, so you, the national competition, so you went to the national competition? I went to Chicago, rode the train. Mm -hmm. And what was that experience like? Uh, for a small town girl, <laughs> it, it was a lifetime experience. Uh, I was in school here at the time, it was my first semester, and so I had to miss classes in order to attend. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, just going, being in a large city, going to all kinds of meetings, all kinds of dinners, uh, was really exciting. Where was that at? The it was in Chicago. Where? Was that at the... I'm not sure. I don't remember exactly where it was. Okay. Uh, All right. Um, what other chores did you have on the farm? Well, I helped mother with the cooking for the farmhands. Uh, when it was summertime and harvest time, uh, of course, you had... Uh, the uh, fellows coming in, uh, one relieving the other, so you were feeding meals almost all day long. And if they could not get home for the meal, you were packing uh, like a picnic lunch and taking it to the fields for them. But as far as in high school, having a job outside of the home, I did not. Were these big meals? 
Oh yes. Oh yes. Fried fried steak, fried chicken, uh, the meat you usually raised on the farm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is, was this for the threshers or was this for cotton or was this for both? Uh, well, uh, it was mainly for uh, the uh, wheat harvest. Yes. Uh, when it came cotton time, I was out in the field with them. Mm -hmm. And usually mother would be home uh, fixing uh, the noon meal for us. Did she, uh, it sounded like, because you said that you can, so it sounded like you guys had a garden? We had uh, a garden, yes. Uh, we did not have a well uh, or much way to water it, uh, but anything that we could not eat fresh, we did can. Mm -hmm. So what kind of so, what kind of canned uh, what kind of vegetables or fruits did uh, tomatoes, you? beans? Uh, one year we had potatoes, and there were little potatoes that we canned. Uh, Fruits. A lot of times we'd go to the orchard and pick uh, pears or peaches or cherries and then we would uh, go ahead and uh, can those. Did, uh, what county was that again? It was in Harmon County. Harmon. Now, mm -hmm. did you participate in the fair down there? Yes. And mm -hmm. uh, I would have exhibits. Uh, clothing, um, home improvement, which might be a tablecloth or pillowcases, um, canning, the gardening, uh, if we had things coming out of the garden that year. Um, I uh, did have some poultry, which was the only animals as the girl I was allowed to raise oh, I didn't for know show. I did not know that. Well, that was my folks. Oh, that was Some of the other girls raised uh, the livestock, sheep, uh, pork. Rabbits. Yes, but uh, I, I helped with the chickens. My brothers helped with the uh, pork, and we didn't raise any uh, of the cattle for show. Now, uh, did you sell the chickens at auction at the fair? Uh, no, at that time we didn't. No, just raised them for your... Just raised them, showed them, and then took them back home. Okay. Mm -hmm. How big was your high school? Uh, in my graduating class, there were 16 of us. 16? Mm-hmm. And we were a very close class. In fact, for our 50th reunion, we had 13 of the 16 back. Wow. So. And that was 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no, that was no, only four, five, uh, four years ago. Four years ago. Yes. Sorry. Mm -hmm. My math mm -hmm. is a little off there. Now, uh, did you guys have a high school football team? No, we didn't because we were out of school in football season. Oh, yeah. During cotton season. Uh, mm -hmm. Baseball, basketball was a very, very large sport. I didn't play any sports. I was not any good in the sports area. So I didn't participate other than maybe watch. Mm -hmm. How did, uh, was there a homecoming celebration for your high school then? Uh, we did, yes. We had, uh, after you graduated, there was a, the uh, uh, homecoming. Uh, it was always the Saturday of Easter weekend. And uh, only graduates could do it, attend for a long time because we mm -hmm. didn't have space. But uh, now, uh, since we lost our high school in 1990, uh, anyone who has attended the school is allowed to come back to the uh, alumni uh, get-together. Mm -hmm. And it's now been moved to the week after Easter. Yeah. Is there... So we go every year instead of every five or ten years. And, and like you said, it sounded like a lot of people come back for that. Oh, they do. They do. They really do. Now, did you come up to uh, OSU for prior to your college for the Roundup? Yes, I came up uh, every year from the time I was 12 years old until I came up here uh, as a student. Can you share a little bit about those experiences? Uh, it was something we looked forward to, and being from a small town, uh, 
where all of our schools, grade school, junior high, and high school, were on the same uh, piece of property to a large campus like this, you just felt like it was overwhelming, but they guided you around and got you to your different contests. We usually had, uh, depending on what we had won in the county, a demonstration, a style review, a speech to give, different judging contests to go to, and um, every year they had a big, uh, one of the clay pots barbecues for us. Uh, and it was because of those experiences that I decided to come to Oklahoma State, uh, then Oklahoma A&M, uh, for my schoolwork. Mm -hmm. Did you uh, participate in the State Fair at all? Yes, uh, I did participate in the State Fair. Of course, to have an item entered in the State Fair, you had to win first place in the county. Mm -hmm. And then based on uh, the points you got for your entries there, uh, you could win a trip to the State Fair, and we actually stayed on the fairgrounds in dormitories uh, for, I think it was uh, four days and participated in judging contests, in uh, lectures. Uh, of course, we always had time for the Midway uh, and the <laughs> Grandstand. To. And we went as a group to the Grandstand. Mm -hmm. And usually they had chairs set down in the infield for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I forget, yeah, I forget what building that was. What building was that the competition then? The they, had, they had what they called the 4-H building. Yeah. I've been to that yeah. No, yeah. How is that different than the Roundup? Oh. Um, Was the Roundup open to every 4 h -er or No, only I believe 12 boys and 12 girls from each county could come to 4-H Roundup at that time. And uh, the State Fair, I don't, I don't believe that many from each county went to the State Fair. Yeah, it was just the winners of the county. Uh, yes, just so many from each county uh, could attend uh, and stay in the dormitory. Of course, anybody that wanted to could go to the fair. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so what years did you, uh, did you go to the state fair? Oh, this would have been probably from 1950 to 55. Wow. During those years, do you did they have horse racing at the fair, or did they have stable racing, or what kind of entertainment did they have? There? If if they had horse racing, I didn't go to it <laughs> <laughs> uh, because during the day uh, we had events that we were expected mm -hmm. to attend. Uh, uh, to, they were learning experiences, judging contests, uh, and. Uh, if we got any free time, uh, we were on the midway. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you came in the fall of 57? Fifty seven. To OSU. Fifty six. Fifty six. Mm -hmm. And and you had uh, you had the your prior experiences with the roundup. Did you have any different sort of reaction of coming up here or? Were you familiar with campus because you attended Roundup? Uh, I was uh, somewhat familiar with campus, uh, and I had met an, another girl at Roundup who was going to take home economics education, the same as I was, who was from a small town, and we decided to room together and help each other find our way around <laughs> campus the first year. We enrolled in the same classes. And who would that be? That was Judy Ford, uh, now Schaefer, uh, and she's now in, living in Bryan, Texas. Okay. Will you see her this weekend? Uh, no, as far as I know, she's not coming back. Okay. Did you, uh, what was the dorm that you were assigned to? Uh, I stayed on the third floor of Willard Dorm for the three years that I, I stayed in a dormitory. Do you, uh, and, but that was during the winter, and then during the summer, I did stay in Stout. I did go to summer school. Okay. And Stout had was a new one with air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> that was probably a godsend for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what what things do you remember about Willard Hall? 
Uh, I worked in the cafeteria of Willard Hall and uh, this was the first year Willard went from the uh, just dining room to the cafeteria style meals uh, where instead of just punching your meal card we had vouchers and you picked up what foods you wanted and then the cashier figured the amount and tore the vouchers out uh, for that amount. But we could also use those at the student union as well as in the dorm. So it gave us a little bit of freedom. Did you have, uh, because you worked in the cafeteria, were you able to get meals for free or? No, I had the voucher just like everybody else. And we had to pay for our meals just like everyone else. Would you work breakfast, lunch? Uh, I, I worked all three meals, not every, all three every day but you got a schedule every week and maybe every semester it would change depending on what hours you had classes. Uh, but I did work all three, uh, worked in the salad dessert area for a while, worked in washing dishes, uh, eventually worked up to be a cashier which paid the whole sum of 75 cents an hour. The other jobs were 50 cents an hour and one semester I actually cooked on the grill, which paid a dollar an hour. And looking back, that's the first time I can remember discrimination on a job. Why is that? Uh, because the, uh, the one that had been doing it before me was a fellow. He was paid a dollar fifty an hour uh, simply because he was a man. Mm. And I was only paid a dollar an hour to do the same work. Things have changed yes, the last few years. Yes, definitely. Did you, uh, now, from what I remember, could you describe, like, the phone situation? Uh, the phone was down the hall. We did not have phones in our room, never heard of a cell phone. And when the phone rang, uh, whoever was closest would answer the phone and then holler the name down the hall of who was wanted on the phone. And uh, this was our method. We did not call home uh, very often. Uh, I know in my situation, you only called home in an emergency mm -hmm. because you had to call collect. Mm -hmm. And I can only remember calling my parents two times during the time I was here in school. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure they were emergencies, but... <laughs> <laughs> You, you felt like they were emergencies. Well, uh, well, I had called my folks when they had told me that I had won the trip to Chicago. And then I also called them when I got engaged. Oh. Did you... Oof, we'll probably get into that. Did you... Uh, did the residence hall... What kind of social functions did the residence hall have? Uh, they had get-togethers in the basement. There, uh, uh, just kind of social. I, it seems like I remember a style review one time since we were all girls in the dorms and uh, the parlors and some of those get-togethers in the basement were the only time, only places fellows could come to. In fact, if one showed up on the upper floors, it was hollered up and down the halls <laughs> that there was a man on floor. Did you get along with, the, with your floor mates? Uh, yes, mm -hmm. uh, I don't remember a lot of their names, but uh, uh, yes, we, we got along real well. Did Willard host any international students? I'm not aware if they did. Okay. Uh, it, it may have been I just wasn't tuned into it at that time. Did you have the same room all three years? Uh, yes, I did. Mm -hmm. Because if you had a room, you were allowed to, you, you had first choice on it again the next year. Mm -hmm. You could move if you didn't like your room. Where was the, where, where, was, your, the, uh, where was it located? It was uh, 318. 318? Mm -hmm. Have you uh, seen Willard Hall since it's been renovated? Uh, yes, I have been to one meeting over there. And wh what did you think about the renovations over there? Uh, well, it makes good use 
of the building. Uh, I was, uh, I believe, in the basement for one of the programs and haven't been on the upstairs floor. But as time goes by, you know, students aren't uh, wanting a small dormitory room with two people in a room and the bathroom down the hall. Mm -hmm. So it was a good way to uh, make use of uh, that building and it is a great lo location. You weren't in a sorority, were you? No, I wasn't. Was there a reason you chose not to? Uh, probably cost. Probably cost. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm not one that likes a lot of socials and you know they had a lot of dances and all so that really wasn't my thing. So what did you do for your free time? How did you entertain yourself? And I spent uh, quite a bit of time at the uh, BSU which was the Baptist Student uh, Center for the first two years and then uh, after that I had met um, my present husband and we started going to Wesley Foundation. Uh, I also was active in Collegiate 4-H and the Home Ec Club and uh, that uh, one, you know, it was a big outing to walk down to Campus Corner and have a cup of coffee, maybe go to the movies at the old Meacham, uh, I believe it's called Meacham Theater that was on that corner. How did, uh, how did Collegiate 4 H differ from uh, your hometown 4 H? Collegiate 4 H was more of a social group here on campus of former 4 Hers from all over the state that were students here. It kind of kept us in touch with the program, and we usually helped with Roundup in the spring. Was it primarily home ec kids, ag students, or was there a whole bunch of different majors in it? Uh, they were from all uh, different areas. Uh, I would say probably the majority uh, were agricultural or home ex students just based on their background of coming from the farms. How many uh, credit hours did you take per semester? Uh, I tried to take uh, about 15 a semester. Uh, I needed the extra time for working as much as I could. Mm -hmm. Did uh Maybe, f could you, uh, let's see, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Uh, do you remember your dorm mom? Uh, I was trying to remember that and I did come up with it. It was um, a Miss White was the uh, dorm mom at that time. Uh, I haven't come up with a mental picture of what she looked like, but I know that uh, she was very good with us girls. Did you uh, have any interaction with the Dean of Women? Uh, no. No? No. Mm -mm. Uh, what about, did you ever have any interaction with the President? Uh, I, I can't remember having interaction with him. I know it was uh, uh, President Wilhelm at mm -hmm. the time. Uh, do you remember how students viewed him? Uh, he was a well-liked president, well-liked by the students. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about, did you partake in, did you go into any athletic events? Uh, I attended a few, but I was not a large sports fan. At that time, we did have um, athletic tickets that would get us into any of them. Uh, we paid uh, a fee when we paid our tuition, uh, a student fee of some type that led us with our ID into any of the football games, basketball games, this type of thing. So I did go to some of those, but working in the cafeteria, sometimes I'd have to go late, sometimes I'd have to leave early in order to get back there. What, what 
What about uh, what campus spots do you remember the most? What like what sticks out in your memory that you have fond memories about campus spots, campus locations? Uh, I remember the Theta Pond being as a real pretty area to walk around, and of course Willard Hall was facing uh, Theta, so uh, it was one that was easily watched and a, a beautiful view out your window. Uh, and then the, the Bennett Memorial Chapel uh, was another beautiful spot on campus. Was that where the Wesley Foundation met? No, Wesley Foundation met across the street from the campus. In their present location? In their present location, yes. Was that the same, same building or? Uh, I believe it was the same building. It's just been renovated, maybe added on to it, but it was a fairly new building at that time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How involved were you in the Wesley Foundation? Well, uh, I wasn't really that involved with Wesley since I had uh, come to the uh, up as a Baptist to the Baptist Student Union. I only went to the Wesley Foundation after I started dating uh, Jim. I was active in the BSU uh, for one semester. I was the editor of their paper that they put out. Mm -hmm. Like, was it? Did you guys, did the BSU have like social activities? We had social activities. We had space where you could come study if you wanted to, devotionals, uh, uh, just a, a good place to hang out with friends. Mm -hmm. Did, uh, where was that located at? Uh, it was uh, where the present location where it is now across the street from uh, the university. What, uh, do you remember where you had class? Like what buildings you had class in? Uh, well, there was the an classroom building. We had quite a few there. And the new home ec building is where a lot of the home economics classes were. And then the food classes were in the old home economics building. Those were the main three that I had classes in. Do you remember any professors that stood out that assisted you greatly or? <laughs> uh, well, uh, there were some, there was a Miss Gould that was our tailoring teacher. Uh, I do remember her and Mrs. Gerber was the chemistry teacher for home economics chemistry, which was a required class. and. Uh, I definitely remember her because uh, it was said if you had not had high school chemistry, you could not pass her class. And of course, I learned this after I was enrolled in the class and I had not had high school chemistry. Um, and then also uh, was told when I wanted to miss class to go to Chicago that there was no way I could pass that class. But I did. You did? I did. Mm -hmm. uh, there was... Um, of course, Dean Leela O'Toole was the Dean of Home Economics at the time. And uh, there were, uh, oh gosh, I'm kind of, kind of blank on some of the others, uh, not being real good with names coming up with them. I can remember some of the classes, um, but that, uh, that's about, as far as it goes on professors. Like, what was your hardest class? Probably that chemistry Probably class. That chemistry. <laughs> uh, the other hard ones for me were the PE classes that were required at the time. Uh, you had to have three semesters of physical education. Yeah. And one of them had to be swimming. And so I struggled through those three classes, not being very sports-minded. And I had trouble with my eyes following the balls when you played tennis or golf, that type of program. I didn't know you had to have three semesters worth. Uh, back then, I don't think you do now. Oh, I don't believe so either. What, what, what classes did you enjoy the most? 
probably my sewing classes uh, because uh, I had been sewing since I was nine, so they came fairly easy for me. Do you still sew? Some. Mm -hmm. Some. Not as much as I used to. Uh, there was a time uh, in earlier years when I even tailored my husband's suits. But it has gotten to where you can buy clothes ready-made cheaper than you can buy the fabric and finding good fabric now is not easy to do. Did you, uh, what kind of, speaking of sewing, was that one of your hobbies that you did while you were here or did you have other hobbies? Uh, I really didn't have too many hobbies when I was in school. Uh, since leaving uh, school I have developed quite a few hobbies. Uh, well, maybe one hobby while I was in school was my cake decorating. And then I've gone on, I, after my children were grown, I got into weaving, and then some basket making, beading, now I'm into the embroidery machine. So, there again, just like in 4-H, I can't settle down on one thing. <laughs> but you, you, you spent your free time, you went to go see movies and... Went to see some movies, yes. Did you go see any of the big bands that came through? or? Uh, I'm tone deaf, so no, I did not go to see any music program if I could get out of it. <laughs> <laughs> what about, uh, was there any like bridge games? or? I never played bridge. Uh, Canasta was one that my family played a lot. Uh, but you didn't have too many students playing that here. Did you hang out at the student union? Very little. Very little? Mm-hmm. Uh, by the time I worked, and I did have to study to make my grades, uh, I spent quite a bit of time at the library. I was just getting into that. Uh, because I found that uh, there were certain areas of the library where it was very quiet and you could study without being interrupted. Whereas in your dorm rooms with a roommate, and people up and down the hall all the time. Sometimes it was hard to get a quiet space you could concentrate on your studies. So tell me about the library uh, from that time period. It was the library that's there now. It was a fairly new library. Uh, to me it seemed like a very large building with <laughs> lots of books and uh, almost amazed if you had to go in and find a certain book. Uh, it took me a while to learn uh, you know, their catalog system and how to find the books I wanted once I found the numbers and information of where they were. Uh, and of course I think it was in my third year that we finally had a library class that explained how the books were cataloged into a library. And that was a one hour class or what? Um, I believe it was a one hour class. It was not a, a real large class but uh, it explained the Dewey Decimal System and uh, how they went about uh, putting it on the books. I don't remember a lot about it but I know it did help in using libraries. Where were your quiet spots? Well, the library uh, was the main one. Uh, sometimes the BSU, uh, you could find a quiet corner there. Uh, they had certain areas that were to be quiet for students to study and other areas uh, where you didn't have to be quiet. Mm -hmm. What were your curfew hours? Do you remember, remember those? Mm. I was thinking about that the other day. I can't remember if it was 9 or 10 o'clock during the week. Uh, and then it was like midnight on Saturday, Friday and Saturday night. And uh, the lights outside the dorm would blink 10 minutes before the doors locked. Mm -hmm. and, but even if you were at the library study and you had to watch the time, was there a difference between men, men's hours and women's hours? I don't believe the men's had curfew hours. 
It was only the women's dorms that had the curfew hours. Did you feel that this was an issue or the difference between the hours? Uh, at the time, I didn't give it any thought about being issues. Uh, it uh, made sure that you got there so you could get your sleep. To, and uh, it sometimes gave you an excuse to come in uh, without having to make an issue of needing to get in. What about dating? Was there, what was dating like back then compared to now? Uh, well, uh, I uh, didn't do too much dating up until my uh, junior year when I started dating Jim. Uh, a big date for us was Wesley Foundation, a walk to Campus Corner for that endless cup of five cent coffee and occasionally a movie. At Wesley Foundation, we did play a lot of games of ping pong. Both of us were on very limited budgets. And so we didn't have a lot of money to spend on going out to eat, or a, a lot of movies, like some of the youngsters seem to now. And even then, some of them had more discretionary money. Uh, but we were both on very tight budgets. How did you meet Jim? Uh, my roommate and some of my friends went to Wesley Foundation and we stayed, or I stayed over between the regular semester and the summer school term to work in the cafeteria during 4-H Roundup. And Jim was a Stillwater boy and he had a car. So we could, uh, the other girls knew him and uh, we, uh, he would take us uh, and we ended up over at Wesley quite a bit, Wesley Foundation. And then after school started back the next fall, we started dating. This would have been your junior year that you started mm -hmm. dating? Mm-hmm. Okay. Did you, uh, now what was summers like? Uh, summers in school were much more relaxed than the winter. Uh, you had fewer subjects, but it was a more concentrated time in the class. But it seems like even the classes themselves were a more relaxed atmosphere. And in a way, I enjoyed it more than I did the winter term. They were smaller, there were less students on campus. And uh, so it was a fun time. Did you ever uh, go out to the lake at all or uh, during, during that time or no? No. Okay. Like, uh, what was, like, so summer session started when and ended when? When did they? St there what? was usually, I believe, two weeks between uh, uh, when the regular session ended and the summer session started. Uh, so it would have been mm, like mid-June and we went for nine weeks. Usually I would spend one week here working and then go home for a week before classes started. Did your uh, parents have a problem with you taking summer courses? My parents encouraged me. Encouraged okay. you? Yes. Uh, they said if I came back to the farm, there really were no jobs. Uh, it was such a small community, and I lived out in the country with no transportation to get to a job if there had been any uh, available. I didn't have a car. Mm -hmm. uh, and on campus, you know, we walked every place. Even if I needed something from downtown, I had to find time to walk downtown from campus. Where did you live during the summertime? Did you live in Willard? Or? I lived in Stout Hall. Stout Hall? Yes. Uh, Willard was not used uh, during the summer because uh, the Stout was a new dormitory and it had air conditioning. So we were all moved to Stout. Did each room have a window no. unit? It was central? It was kind of central. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that was a blessing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> did uh, did you uh, meet many people then in Stout Hall, or was it a different group of people that you hung out with? Or uh, A few of the same ones that I had known from Willard 
were going to summer school. Uh, so uh, even though you would meet a few new ones, at this point I don't remember any of the ones I met just during the summer. Okay. Do you uh, speak it because we're here for homecoming, do you remember anything about home? What do you remember about homecoming? I remember they had parades. Uh, we didn't have the big house decorations that we have now. Uh, we had some uh, hall decorations, uh, competitions between the uh, students in the dorm, decorating our doors, uh, maybe decorating uh, uh, downstairs. Uh, there was a big parade downtown, and uh, so uh, usually go to the parades. Did you, uh, was there any walkout dates that you remember? Uh, I can't recall. It seems like there was at least one walkout day when we won some big sports event, but I don't remember what it okay. was. Did you, uh, what about uh, other traditions like uh, Religious Emphasis Week? Do you remember that? I don't remember that. Uh, uh, what about Howdy Week? The what? Howdy Week? Howdy Fresh, week? Freshman orientation? Or? Uh, I never participated in that, so I don't remember uh, any anything about it. Did you wear a beanie? Uh, no. No? I <laughs> don't, don't recall a beanie. Okay. Now, when... Were, were you engaged with uh, your husband here? Yes. Yes? Yes, uh-huh. Did he get uh, tossed into uh, Theta Pond? Uh, I don't think he did. You don't think he did? <laughs> uh, we were engaged and then married uh, the summer of uh, 59 and because he was going to put in his army time. And then I graduated in January of 60. So he served in... He served, he was in the Army uh, at Fort Lee, Virginia. Okay. Uh, he left in October oh. uh, after school had started. But, you know, some of the big events while I was in school was changing from Oklahoma A&M to Oklahoma State. That happened after my first year. And, uh, then uh, in 57, you know, we had the Oklahoma Semi uh, cent Centennial. And I can remember there were a lot of things going on for that, a few on campus. Uh, but that was a biggie at that time. Mm -hmm. Was there any, uh, what do you remember about the name change? Did you have an opinion about it? Or? Uh, you know, at the time, you kind of grew attached Oklahoma A&M, uh, but uh, it, as time went on, it was, uh, well, we're moving from a college to a university. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was going to ask you, were, uh, so not many people had cars on campus at that time? Not very many at all. Uh, there were some that did. Uh, there were two or three from my hometown that did, and so I was able to get rides back and forth when I needed to go home. How often would that be? Uh, of course, you had your uh, Thanksgiving, Christmas, between semesters in the winter, and maybe two other times during the year. Would you go home for Easter then? or? Uh, yes, we usually went home for Easter because that was my high school alumni get together too. <laughs> uh, so I'd go home for Easter. Uh, but we didn't have as long out for Easter as we do now. Mm -hmm. Was well, your spring break in March or in, around Easter time? We didn't have what was called spring break. Okay. Um, you, you know, you had a little time at Easter. And the same thing in fall, we didn't have fall break. We had uh, uh, time at Thanksgiving. Mm. And you would get like what the two days prior to Thanksgiving or the whole week or? Uh, we didn't get a whole week. As I recall, we might have had like that Thursday and Friday, and then the weekend. Mm -hmm. What? What kind? I'm just curious. What kind of car did uh, Jim drive? 
Uh, at the time, he was driving a 1950 uh, Chevrolet. Mm -hmm. And uh, drove it until 1960 when we were able to get a new car. What what uh for you? What are some of your favorite memories about OSU? Oh boy, <laughs> uh, I I had good experiences in the dormitory um, with the uh, girls that were there. Uh, we'd have get-togethers in our rooms uh, at different times. We'd say, okay, we're all going to get together and so-and-so's room and we go down and have an evening of just chatting. Um, maybe somebody brought some cookies from home. We weren't allowed to cook in our rooms at that time. We couldn't even have popcorn poppers or like electric skillets. Uh, but we'd get together in the room and just have a lot of fun, maybe even late at night in our pajamas. And uh, of course I enjoyed uh, uh, going to BSU and Wesley Foundation and participating in the events there. Uh, the Collegiate 4-H, I enjoyed going to their meetings because a lot of those youngsters I had, even though they were from over the state, I had met them earlier at 4-H Roundup. Mm -hmm. And there, Ira Haller was the state 4-H leader. And I, the thing I remember about him was if he had met you as a 4-H youngster, he could call your name anytime he met you on campus. Wow, good memory there. Yes, it was. What do you uh, still keep in touch with uh, the friends that you made? Uh, I keep in touch with uh, two of the girls that I lived in the home management house with. Oh, I was going. And also uh, my former roommate and the girl that I did my student teaching with. And we all correspond at Christmas time and maybe in between. Could you uh, share some experience about the home management house? Uh, I uh, was in the new home management house, uh, which was on North Monroe, and Miss McAllister was the uh, lady that was in charge of the home management house. And her reputation was uh, that she did not give A's. So the six of us girls uh, got together in advance and said, okay, so we're not going to get an A, let's have fun. And evidently that worked uh, because we, she said that we would get up and find things in the cabinets that had not been used for semesters and use them with some of our meals. Uh, we had um, different ones of us were assigned a, a week at a time to plan meals and we were giving a low cost, a medium cost, or a high cost uh, budget to work on to plan the meals for the week. And then we would plan our meals, meet with Miss McAllister, and she would make suggestions or tell us things. And the thing I remember is uh, one of the uh, girls said to her one time, Miss McAllister, you told me this and you told uh, so-and-so something uh, different. She says, aha, you are communicating. I said, I did that on purpose. <laughs> and uh, that was one thing I remember. And she said, because we did work together as a good group. Now the home management, was that the last? That was the last semester. Uh, it, in home economics, we called it, you were on the block. You spent about two weeks in the classroom preparing you for student teaching. Then you were out in the field student teaching, and I was at Glencoe for six weeks. And, and then you came back and had a couple of more weeks in the classroom, reviewing what you learned there and preparing you to go into the home management house. Then we moved into the home management house and actually lived there for six weeks. We also had classes while we were there for that six weeks that were more career orientated, how you interview, how you dress when you go out on the job, and this, besides keeping up the house, doing the meals, the cleaning, everything. 
And then when we moved out of there, we had two more weeks in the classroom. So it's good prep. Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. Did, okay, so uh, we're approaching the end here. What happened to you after? Could you run a snapshot of where your life projected since you left OSU? Uh, of course, I was married before I graduated, so as soon as um, I was out of class, I went to Virginia and met uh, Jim there. We lived in uh, outside of uh, Fort Lee, Virginia in Hopewell uh, until he was giving a medical discharge because he did wear a back brace and he bro broke the back brace and they couldn't figure out how he got in. Uh, we came back and he started to work as the assistant manager in Red Rock, Oklahoma. And we had our first child, Catherine, uh, while we lived there, and then moved from there to Tonkawa, Oklahoma, and our son, Byron, was born there. And then in 62, um, we moved to Wichita, Kansas, and we, he worked with Farm Credit. I was a homemaker and volunteer, and we lived there for 28 years. There was a merger, and we were transferred to Denver, Colorado, for two and a half years, and at that time, uh, Jim retired. We bought the home place and moved back to Stillwater. How did how long in that time did uh, Stillwater change? It grew tremendously. Uh, the uh, we're living on forty acres, uh, which was way out in the country at the time it was bought in the nineteen forties by his family and now it is inside the city limits and across the road from us are like 600 apartments and we back up to the airport so we're seeing more small jets uh, at that time it was all you know just small airplanes and now there are some uh, smaller jets that we do see coming into the airport how has the university changed since you were... Uh, oh, has it ever grown? <laughs> <laughs> Just like the town. Just like the town. <laughs> it's almost like you really can't... Uh, you have to reorientate yourself to the campus where the buildings are <laughs> and uh, uh, just, just like starting over. What do you think about all these changes? Uh, if you don't change, you're going to go backwards. I, I think it's good. Uh, if you don't keep changing and growing, you're going to be in trouble down the line. How has uh, OSU impacted your life? Uh, well, uh, I think without OSU as a background uh, and as a, a small town student, uh, I, I probably would have ended up on the farm and not have seen the uh, the world with its big eyes is up ahead uh, just because of coming up here. Now, is there anything that you're looking forward to about this weekend? Uh, I think uh, this morning was a big morning uh, for the home economics or human environmental science yeah. <laughs> graduates, 50 year really graduates. Um, uh, we had a get together this morning and uh, uh, followed by pictures. Uh, with Pistol Pete, <laughs> and then lunch at the Taylor Dining Room nice. and a program, and then this, and then uh, if we're not too tired, <laughs> we will probably do the reception and walk around tonight, and then the parade in the morning. Mm -hmm. well, what do you think of Taylor's? Uh, it is a lovely dining yeah. room. It, they have really added to uh, the HES uh, buildings and their equipment. Now is there anything that you would like to add before we go here that we haven't covered? Uh, gosh, we've covered a lot of ground <laughs> <laughs> uh, and things have really changed in the last 50 years uh, because you know I can remember as a youngster no running water, no electricity at home and here we are with our inter fast internet <laughs> and uh, uh, cell phones and uh, 
the way the world changes. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, college work, uh, as they told us, all college does is teaches you to learn. Uh, you have to keep learning at, or you're going to be left behind. Mm -hmm. you, would you consider yourself a lifelong learner then? Yes, we are very active with the Oshner Lifelong Learning Institute here in Stillwater. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that program? I think it's the tops. <laughs> there you go. Uh, we know we're going to send our membership in every year, uh, even before we see what programs are being offered. And we try to take um, as many as we can. Uh, you know, you can only take one on Tuesday morning and then town forum on Tuesday afternoon, one on Thursday morning, one on Thursday afternoon, and then some of the computer programs. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we're taking in as many of those as we can be, and have not had one yet that we did not think was excellent. <laughs> That's a good thing. Well, I thank you for your time today and I appreciate uh, the opportunity to interview you today and, uh, and I wish you the best and I hope you have a, continue to have a fun and great weekend here. Okay, thank you. Thank you.